I fail to mentor Dr. Kuhn and Dr. Builder and my collaborators and my family from the program of personalized health and CCPS. Um, and then I use a lot of data sources that I can acknowledge as well. Okay, so autism spectrum disorders are a neurodevelopmental condition characterized by social and communication differences as well as restricted and repetitive behaviors. Uh, it's currently estimated to be present in about 1 in 59 eight year old children in the US, uh, and that has increased quite dramatically um, over the past decade or so. And um, currently, it's estimated to be much more common in males. The ratio is about four to one. Um, and it co occurs often with uh, things like intellectual disability, um, attention problems, medical conditions like seizures and uh, gastrointestinal problems, psychiatric conditions like depression and anxiety. And then on the other side, um, Suicide is a current leading cause of death in the United States. It's the second leading cause of death among 10 to 34 year olds after accidents. Um, and the rates of suicide are on the rise as well, and you can see in the United States and then um, even more so in Utah. Um, and that's also more common in males than females. So the ratio is about three and a half to one. And you can see on this map that um, the dark colors, Utah is in what is being termed as a suicide belt. Um, so part of the country that has much higher rates of suicide than others. So there's some evidence to suggest that people with autism may be at increased risk for suicide. There was some research um, in a lot of clinical samples um, that has shown that suicidal ideations or suicidal thoughts are really high in um, people with autism. Um, and then there's been one population-based study in Sweden that showed um, much, elevate, much elevated rates of suicide and mortality among people on the spectrum. Um, and this was especially noted in females with autism um, as well as those without an intellectual disability, so that's those who have average or above average IQ. Um, but there is no US-based epidemiological research looking at suicide and autism. Um, so suicide is also known to be highly associated with um, a number of mental and physical health conditions, like anxiety, bipolar disorder, depression, personality disorders, uh, substance abuse, um, asthma, cancer, and so on. Um, but we don't know anything about health-related uh, suicide risk factors in autism. Um, and then more generally, you just don't know very much about any unique risk factors for um, suicide in this group. So my KL2 project, uh, first aim was about estimating the incidence of suicide in Utah um, among people with autism and comparing it to people without autism. And we looked at 20 years and broke it down by sex. And then we also wanted to characterize individuals with autism who died by suicide and look at demographics and health conditions uh, and compare with other people with autism as well as other suicide cases. Um, and so to do this, we use um, epidemiological approaches and a number of unique data resources here in Utah, so the Utah Population Database, um, Department of Health Data, um, Intermountain, um, the U Health, um, the Utah Registry of Autism and Developmental Disorders, which tracks autism prevalence in the state of Utah, um, and then data from the Office of the Medical Center. So we saw over the 20 year period that there was an increase in prevalence um, of suicide among people with autism. And then notably, we saw an increase in um, both males and females, but we didn't see any cases of suicide in females with autism until the most recent time period we looked at, 2013 to 2017. Um, and then there's a lot going on in this slide, but the bottom right um, is one I want to point your attention to. Uh, so those are our significant findings. So suicide was much more common in autism, 
not much more common. <laughs> a 1.5 relative risk is not much more common, but um, more common um, in the most recent time period we looked at, so that 2013 to 2017 period, um, we saw 1.56 relative risk in autism as compared to those without autism. Um, and that was really being driven, interestingly, by uh, females on the spectrum. So their relative risk was 3.4. So again, remember I said autism is much less common in females and suicide is much less common in females, but we're seeing that the risk of suicide in females with autism is um, much elevated. So, um, and that's consistent with what we saw in the study from Sweden. Okay, and then in, uh, overall there were 49 cases of individuals with autism who had died by suicide in Utah over the 20 year period. 86% of them were male, 88% um, of them were white, 12% were married, 49% um, were reported on the death certificate to be currently students or employed. There's a lot of missing data there, but, um, but that stood out to me. And then the death age um, was averaged at 32.4 years, um, with the median lower than that. Um, so it was definitely skewing younger, and that was significantly younger than the non-autism suicide cases. But it's important to keep in mind that, um, again, how the prevalence of autism has increased over time. Uh, so there's very few older adults who have an autism diagnosis, so, um, so we weren't surprised. And then 73% um, used violent methods of suicide, so um, those are considered things like firearm use, um, hanging strangulation, or blunt force injury. Um, sorry, it's a very morbid topic. Um, so, and then 24.5% used firearm or gunshot methods. Um, which sounds high, but it's actually um, the comparison group was um, over half of them that used firearm and gunshot methods. So, uh, so this was significantly lower in the autism group. And then um, in terms of the medical um, records data that we used, um, we had, there were 7,284 people um, who had died by suicide that had billing records that we could look at. And so we just compared what we saw in the autism versus the non-autism groups. And so we saw that the autism um, suicide procedures had much elevated, um, they were much more likely to have uh, a, a whole host of things listed here, so depression, anxiety, um, Substance abuse, which was really interesting because substance abuse is pretty um, low in the autism uh, population in general, from what we know. Um, so that really stood out um, to me. Um, sleep disorders, ADHD, um, asthma, personality disorders, post traumatic stress. Um, I hope you can read those if you can. Um, And then they, there were group differences on a number of other. Um, conditions that we looked at, including gastrointestinal cyst uh, symptoms, um, brain injury, eating disorders. Okay, so um, kind of overview, we saw an evidence of higher incidence of suicide in the autism population in Utah, um, but this was primarily driven by the female suicide definition. Um, really interested to look more at health conditions. Right now we don't have data to compare the individuals with autism who have not died by suicide with those suicide deaths to see if they, they are more likely to um, have had such conditions. So we're hoping to get that data soon. Um, and then there's a number of thoughts that um, we have based on these results. So. Um, when I go to autism conferences, there's starting to be some conversation about these um, studies showing higher suicide risk. And um, a lot of people are talking about, well, the problem is employment. It must be employment. So we need to employ, uh, like, fix employment. But I just want to point out that, again, um, almost half of our sample were either employed or currently students. Um, and then we 
the others weren't necessarily on board. They, they didn't have uh, data. So um, I think it's just important to say that employment is not a de facto suicide prevention. We, we need to think about other things as well. Um, and then another common suicide prevention approach is really restricting access to firearms. Um, and then again, it's because firearms are such a common um, method of suicide, but we didn't see that in our office example. They were well, much less likely to use firearms. So again, that's not um, going to be enough. Um, and then just in general, we need um, better understanding of risks and prevention specific to this population. Um, so that leads me to just mention uh, my future work. Hopefully I just submitted a grant um, <coughs> with uh, Hillary Kuhn and Louisa Stark, who's here. Um, and I want to continue some of this epidemiological work on this topic, but I also um, just want to integrate some community-engaged research methods and talk to community members. Um, who have experienced suicidality and uh, for whom this is a really important topic. Um, and 